Once again, a big thank you to everyone who has joined us here at the Florida Maquis YouTube channel and as well over at the Patreon channel. This has been kind of a tough week, week and a half with the fighting the cold. Plus, there hasn't been really a whole lot going on in the world of note to really dive into, but there have been some events we're going to talk about, especially here in Florida today. Also, those of you over at the Patreon channel, we're going to be getting up some new psychological operation stuff. Hopefully by Sunday, we'll have a brand new video up because that's always something that people need to be cognizant of, maintaining the battlefield of the mind because their war against us never stops. They'll always be trying to do something and we always have to be aware of it. Now, I woke up this morning to a headline that said, Governor to make um, incredibly important announcement, uh, liberals are going to melt down, all this kind of stuff, so... Kept an eye open for it, and basically the idea is this. Over here in Hillsborough County, it's a very liberal area of Florida, there was a guy named Andrew Warren. He was a state's attorney. Apparently he decided to call a governor and see if he was bluffing about enforcing the laws in the state, and the governor called him on it and dismissed him. Now, a lot of people have question this because this state's attorney was an elected official and people are saying well wait a minute how can the governor just dismiss an elected official well there's standards of behavior and there's job standards and the guy wasn't fulfilling them and of course the governor had the support of the local sheriffs and he had a replacement in mind and of course the support of attorney general ashley moody but this guy was financed by george soros a lot of people think that these billionaires, these rich guys, are um, impervious and nothing can be done to stop them. Well, Soros spent all of his money. Soros got the guy elected. The guy didn't do his job. And the guy's gone. And there's nothing Soros can do about it. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has suspended State Attorney Andrew Warren for refusing to prosecute illegal abortions or child sex change operations. Warren's 2016 election campaign was bankrolled by liberal financier George Soros. DeSantis announced Warren's suspension on Thursday, speaking at a press conference. The Republican governor said that Warren had put himself publicly above the law by signing a letter vowing not to prosecute anyone performing abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy, which have been illegal in the state since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade in June. Warren also signed a joint statement with other prosecutors in June 2021 stating that he would not prosecute anybody offering gender-affirming care to trans youth, blah, 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 blah. A term that covers a range of treatments from, well, you know what it is. Both letters were cited in DeSantis' executive order suspending Warren. In a statement explaining the suspension, the suspension DeSantis' office said that we are suspending Soros back 13th Circuit State Attorney Andrew Warren for neglecting his duties as he pledges not to uphold the laws of the state. See, it's pretty straightforward. You can be as rich as you want, but the law is the law. And when you have a governor that will enforce it and will stand up for what his position says he's supposed to do, they'd, they'd be powerless. I don't care who they are. I don't care if it's Gates. I don't care if it's the Bilderbergers. I don't care if it's the Rothschilds. I don't care who it is. They put somebody in place and they openly and blatantly violate the law. You know, they, you know, even the liberal media here in Florida hasn't had a whole bunch to say about this. Other than, you know, they're saying it's politically motivated, but they're not saying what he did was illegal. It's perfectly legal. And what the guy, I mean, the letters are a matter of public record. And it's his job to enforce any law that is broken within his jurisdiction. And whether he would want to or not want to or whatever his opinion would be inside of himself, it's really irrelevant. There are people that would like there to be laws that are more conservative in this country and in this state. But the laws are what the laws are. And we have to abide by them. 
So that's kind of the big news out of Florida. But one thing I was thinking about going through all of this issue with the 2020 sniffles the last week or so was, let's say power down, grid down would have hit when I was in the middle of a sickness or anyone was in the middle of a sickness. I asked myself, what would be the biggest thing that I think I would have missed? And honestly, it sounds simple. But man, I have been living off the uh, ice and water in the door of the fridge. Just to be able to go get a big, huge tumbler full of ice on demand like that. That's a big deal. And if you were in a situation like that, you would definitely want to have access, pardon me, to ice. And um, we're going to cover this in a minute. This is uh, BP Earthwatch, who... uh, Strangely enough, a few days after I mentioned The Walking Dead did as well, because I think he saw the same thing. The idea of in a grid down, power down situation that you would see the rise of micro kingdoms. And that's what he put in his title. But back to this idea. Keeping the ice on. um, There's an article this guy uh, talks about uh, from Backwoods Home Magazine. Now, a lot of these ice makers and refrigerators use a ton of power during a grid-down situation. A big double-door fridge with ice and water in the door is going to drain you as far as fuel goes. They do make these. I got this off of BP Earthwatch, too. This is $739 for a cooler that has a built-in freezer. But I found a couple of tabletops that you can get off Amazon. One's less than 100 bucks. And it'll make 26 pounds of ice in less than a day. And ice and ready in up to six minutes. And believe me, that would be a huge deal. It's it's only about 115 volts, 120 watts. So it wouldn't uh, break the bank as far as running the generator. And there's two different models. There's this one from Home Labs. And this one from Vremi. And this, I tell you what, if you didn't have ice and you needed ice for whatever reason, sprained ankle or somebody just giving over, getting over a sickness, trying to bring down a fever, for this little tiny amount of money, 80 or 100 bucks, and only pulling 120 watts, which is really nothing. Now, caveat, these things do have a... Uh, initial startup voltage or startup pull that you'll need an inverter that can handle about oh five to 600 watts at least because they have their initial startup wattage. So make sure you have whatever you're going to plug it into as a big enough um, inverter to handle that. But you don't need a very big one for six or seven, five or 600 watts. They run at, I mean, what they run at once they're going is about 120 watts, which really is nothing. But for what it can bring to your survival situation, huge, absolutely huge. But I did want to get back to uh, this video from BP Earthwatch. There will be no vacuum of power, meaning if and when the power goes out, lights go out, And you've got your group. Your group is going to do okay for a while. But people are going to start to wonder what's next for the world. Even if you've gotten a really good routine going of being able to provide yourself with food and with water. And not just from what you've stored up. Meaning you've been able to go out and forage and find a regular supply of, say, fish out of a lake or a stream or hunting, or some other regular way of affecting long-term survival, gardening, or whatever. Long-term, people are going to say, look, we need to probably, you know, venture out and see what's out there before something ventures and finds us. I would rather always be have a group out doing scouting than just sitting back waiting to be scouted. 
if that makes sense. So keeping an eye open for this type of thing and not having a necessarily a fear of leadership, but keep your eyes open for those that want to run out in front too quickly. There's going to have to be somebody making decisions. There's just no way around it with division of labor in any survival group. You're going to have people that are tasked with security. People that are tasked with security. People that are tasked with, of course, foraging, medical care. I mean, all sorts of different jobs that are you're going to have to have to have a community that works. And that's going to have to be organized by somebody. It's not going to happen all by itself. So, it's something to think about. It's a really good video that talks about this from BP Earthwatch, the really BP Earthwatch. Um, it's one of his latest videos. I think it's, it's a couple days ago. I'll throw the link down in the first pinned comment, but... Ice. If you can find a cheap way to make ice during a survival grid down situation, I'll tell you what, for less than a hundred bucks to make 26 pounds of ice a day, that's a pretty good deal. The one that's a little bit bigger, it has a thing where it'll, uh, it recycles the water from the ice that melts to make other cubes. So, 20 bucks difference. Looks like it's a little bigger storage, too. Of course, it's not like having a full-size fridge, but full-size refrigerators take 1,000 watts, at least. So, anyway, I will leave it there, but thank you once again, everyone, for your support going through this, fighting the voice, fighting getting back to uh, full strength, so... God bless you all. I sure appreciate it. Join us over at Patreon if you can. Would very much appreciate it. One US dollar per month. It's the only level. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.